AMD recently had its AI event where it released a lot of different products for the data center market. Unfortunately, this AI event was not the catalyst many investors were hoping and the stock actually dropped while the event was going on. Now, in today's episode, what I want to do is take a closer look at what AMD missed and why the stock price dropped. But more importantly, I do believe there are some things that investors and Wall Street missed that are a very, very big deal for the long term of this company. Now, talking about very big deals, I think it would be amazing and a super big deal if you make sure to hit the thumbs up, subscribe button, and check out the pinned comments for a free Substack and my special offer at fool.com slash Jose. So enough with that, let's get started. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video and check out fool.com slash Jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now. With that link, you get a promotional offer for the subscription service. Now, let's continue with today's episode. All right, so if you are familiar with my channel, you know, in the past two weeks, I've done two individual videos about how this AI event could be a catalyst for the stock if AMD revealed three important things. And unfortunately, as we are going to find out today, they did not release what I was expecting could be a catalyst for the stock. And I am going to explain a little bit about them. And after that, we're going to jump about everything else that they kind of explained throughout the event. So the first catalyst that I believe was AMD was going to introduce new customers for their AI accelerators. Unfortunately, that did not happen. If that was the case, I do believe AMD stock price would have gone up a nice amount. In forms of AI accelerators for their upcoming MI325, they continue to have the same customers, which is Microsoft. It's also Oracle. And I believe the third one was Meta Platform. So while they didn't announce them, there was no announcement of new customers either. So if we would have seen Google in there for the MI300 or the MI325 or Amazon. That would have been a big deal. Some people might be might go and say, Jose, we did see Google in that event. We did see Google, but that was for a CPU product, not for the GPU product, which is very important to understand. So more importantly, no new customers for their AI accelerator, which unfortunately sucks. The second thing is will AMD announced a new product line. And the way I, I, I've talked about it in my previous episodes is there was a conference early in August, I believe, where Lisa Sue mentions that there is the potential of entering the semi custom silicon market for AI accelerators. So pretty much making ASIC solutions for all these big tech players. If they were to announce something like that during the AI event or talk more about it, I think that would have also been a nice, nice catalyst. Unfortunately, that was not the case. Now, the third thing I mentioned was going to be a big update to their networking solution. And I want to say AMD did announce this and it was a very big deal in my opinion. But for I want to say most of Wall Street and probably most investors, they don't know how much of a big deal this is. And I'm going to make sure to cover it in today's episode. But we can see that AMD did announce their data center GPUs, data center CPUs, their networking solution, and also an AI PC for the business market. And that's where we're going to start off first. I do want to say there was one big event that did save, in my opinion, or a bullish event that did save kind of the stock from crashing anymore. Piper Sandler did adjust their price target on AMD to $200 from 175 while most other analysts, I believe, just reiterated their current rating. So Piper Sandler, in my opinion, does see a nice bullish trend here. And I do believe they are a little bit more in the know about the networking side right now. All right, so next, let's take a closer look at valuation. P.E. ratio four, which ends within the next three months, so the end of this fiscal year, is 49.65. Obviously, that is pretty high in my opinion. But when we're looking at semiconductor companies, I do believe we're really looking more at the future investment opportunity. So forward one year, which is the end of next fiscal year, so about 15 months from now, has dropped down to 31. I personally believe this is a little expensive for my taste, but I definitely see the growth opportunities that I'm going to mention. AMD is my second biggest position in my overall portfolio, only behind Nvidia. So maybe because it's already such a big position in my overall portfolio, I tend to be a little bit more patient and a little bit more thoughtful on when I would like to add. I've talked about AMD 
plenty of opportunities when it's below 150 and we've seen that plenty of times in the past few months now right now is that time hey for me to wait and be happy with my number two position and just wait for opportunities where there's going to be opportunities in the market where i'm willing to add some more as well so those are just my overall thoughts as the overall semiconductor market has a lot of bullish trends going its way from the PC market, from the growth in the GPU market, from the growth in the server CPU market, from the growth in the embedded market as well. So now that we understand my thoughts about both the valuation and the events, I want to take a closer look at the products they did announce first. And I'm going to go with least important in my mind to most important. And the first least important was the AI PC CPU. So AMD did announce the AI Pro 300 series processors to power next generation of commercial PCs. These are PCs pretty much meant for the business market. So if you are, for example, working from home, maybe your company might buy you the next generation of Ryzen AI PCs. So this new NPU, which is their kind of semiconductor product, that is meant for AI processing is over 50 plus, which is exceeding Microsoft's co-pilot and AI PC requirement. So we can see um, that this is their third generation and this is the Strix point. So just to remind investors, we already have this in the consumer market, right? This is out and we are getting some great reviews here. Now this is more for the business side as it does seem like AMD does believe that the AI PC can definitely be a huge benefactor for the business market. Now, the second thing that they announced, AMD did announce their fifth Torin, fifth generation AMD Epic CPU, the Torin, and they mentioned that this is going to boost up to 5 gigahertz compared to 3.8 gigahertz processor power of the competition, aka Intel. They also did kind of showcase some slides where because you have a better CPU, your GPU performs a lot and a lot better. And this is something if you are a gamer that you should know, right? Sometimes your CPU creates a bottleneck for your GPU, and it's pretty much the same in the data center space. So AMD is saying, hey, look, if you want to actually have the most AI GPU power from um for you available, you have to make sure you have the best CPU available. And we are doing that with AMD's Epic fifth generation CPU. Another great update is Lisa Su did announce that right now their revenue market share has grown to 34% by the first half of 2024, where in 2018 was less than 2%. And this slide, I believe, is what many investors get excited about the GPU space, right? The GPU space for AMD is in the single digits. And many are expecting that maybe eventually it can be in the teens, maybe in the 20s, and maybe one day in the 30s. I'm going to say NVIDIA is going to be a lot harder to play ball with than Intel because Intel, as we all know, was slacking a little bit, but there is always that opportunity. The next big event, in my opinion, was the announcement of AMD's MI325X. Now, again, this was already known to the public. We already knew that we were going to hear about the MI325X. What we were expecting is more customers. Unfortunately, we did not get that. Another thing is I do watch a lot of these events and I keep screenshots from all these events. One thing I did notice was the AMD's MI325 is now mentioning to have 256 gigs of HBM3E memory, where during the Computex, they mentioned up to 288. So it seems like they might be releasing a weaker version right now, and there might be the future of a stronger version of the MI325X later on. But regardless, I'm not fan, a fan to see, hey, look, you're reducing your memory capacity. What happened? Was there some issues in the design? Is there just not enough memory at the market right now that you have to kind of wiggle some room to make sure you have high inventory? So that opened up a lot of questions. The other thing is the MI325X is expected to combat against NVIDIA's H200, but the MI325X is not expected to be released into a quarter of 2024. That's the same time Blackwell is coming out. So some investors are worried that, hey, look, AMD is kind of still falling really much behind compared to NVIDIA. More importantly, right, because a and AMD is going to release the MI350 in the second half of 2025, when that's when NVIDIA should be releasing their Blackwell Super platform. So again, 
we're seeing maybe AMD lagging a little bit, but on the bright side, I want to say AMD did announce their AI accelerator total addressable market, which jumped to $500 billion by 2028, representing a 60% compounded annual growth rate. Now, the AI accelerator is not just GPUs. It's a lot of different products from ASIC solutions, from semi-custom to GPUs as well. So obviously, if this market is growing so big, even if AMD takes market as uh, breadcrumbs in this market i do believe it could be very very bullish for the company in general one thing that we are hearing is this is a market that's supply constraint not demand constraint so while nvidia might be doing great with their blackwell eventually they're going to be sold out of their blackwell maybe their hopper 200 and when that happens it's going to drive customers to their amd ai accelerators like the mi325 the mi300 so right now, the market is in a place where even if you are second or third place, you can definitely benefit because there's not enough of the first place to go around. And I want to say, while that sucks, it might be a bad bullish scenario. It's definitely kind of like a golden opportunity for AMD right now to be able to make a name for itself, right? Because now if you're having AI developers buying your products because they need to continue to develop, you're also going to have developers kind of creating applications, libraries, and other types of products for your software, making it more and making it better over time. So I do believe AMD, while they're not first player, the overall market is giving them a great opportunity for them to continue to evolve even if they don't have the best product in the space. So the final thing I want to take a closer look at is AMD did talk about their networking solutions, and this is via their DPUs and their NICs. And AMD, they recently, they acquired Pensando a few years ago. And for the data center market, especially for AI clusters, both of these provide very, very important solutions. DPUs are normally good for like kind of the front end, and then NICs are pretty good for kind of the back end, um, back end of networking. And NICs right now are very, very important for kind of these huge AI clusters. AMD and a lot of different companies are kind of creating this ultra ethernet consortium, which is expected to kind of combat against Nvidia's networking solution. And AMD did announce that their upcoming NIC, the AMD Pensando Polara 400, is the industry's first ultra ethernet consortium ready AI NIC. And for those that are not familiar, these kinds of networking cards, you sometimes need about two to four per GPU not per server, per GPU. So this is a huge market opportunity, especially in the future once we start to see this huge, huge amount of AI clusters coming out from other type of players like AMD, for example. So when the opportunity opens up where AMD starts building thousands and hundreds of thousands of AMD GPU clusters, then they're also going to be selling a lot of these Pensando DPUs, which I think is something a lot of investors are missing out. Or maybe they're not missing out, but this is something that's going to have to take some time to build over time. It's not going to be something that's going to grow the revenue this quarter or next quarter. But once we start to see those huge GPU clusters from AMD's products, this is going to be another massive tailwind that I think investors missed. All right, so those are my overall thoughts on AMD. I talked about the valuation. I talked about what they missed presenting. I also talked about what I believe were great solutions for the overall AI market that can be bullish for AMD. So like I mentioned, I'm not saying AMD is overvalued at this moment, but everybody should understand your risk to reward ratio. It's still my number two holding. I have no intentions of selling, but I have no intentions of buying right now. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Take care. Have a good day and see you all next time.